I've got two subjects in this talk, uh, coding freeform optics and the ideal index of refraction profile. We're now able to design and produce freeform optical surfaces. And there's been some concern expressed about how we uh, do anti-reflection coatings, but it's really the same problem as a hemisphere where we have all angles of incidence. Uh, so any surface can be from zero to 90 degrees. In my book, some time ago, I published my thought that the ideal anti-reflection coating is a index profile from the substrate to the media. In this case, let's say crown glass to uh, air, where the index refraction changes in a Gaussian form expressed by this formula. And in 1947, Herpin uh, in Paris published an article of using matrix description of a thin film where a matrix two by two can express the index of refraction uh, in thickness of a thin film at a given wavelength and angle. And uh, what Herpin showed was if you had a high and a low index, which were above and below some index you wanted but could not find in nature, you could approximate that or simulate that with three matrices of high, low, high, or low, high, low of your materials that you do have available. And uh, he further stipulated that the outside matrices had to be symmetric or the same. And with that combination, you could produce the effective index of any thing in between the highest and the lowest index. Uh, this might be shown also in this graphic where the blue is high and the red is low and the green is something in between. Now, if I took the uh, Gaussian curve that I wanted and I wanna simulate that, I could actually divide it as in this case into let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 pieces. And then the first piece, this is gonna have an index just a little less than the index four of a germanium substrate. So it'll be mostly germanium and just a little bit of the low index. And there'll be a layer like this over on this end. But for the next layer, it's gonna be not quite as much high and a little bit more low here and here, but these two lows from these two simulations will merge with each other to become just a thicker low index layer. So we do the same thing throughout until we get down to the end here where the next to last Herpin simulation will have very little high and a lot of low. And then the last one will have all low. So we have approximated the index profile of the uh, Gaussian form. However, as I've showed in my book also, whatever your lowest index you have available to you is gonna limit how good you can do in terms of the lowest average reflectance in a very broad wavelength band. And so the bottom line is it'll end up looking like you have transformed a high index substrate into a low index substrate of whatever your lowest index is. And in that case, when I look at the spectrum created, I've got a very broad band from two to 20 microns in this case, which is down in the 1% region. So it's a broad band AR coating whereas the uncoated substrate might reflect 36%. Now there's another way to do this, and that would be to use lithographic techniques where I can etch the substrate. And we now develop technologies to etch a lot of materials. So it's potentially possible 
to etch, uh, for example, a germanium surface where the very top of this is almost no germanium and a lot of air in between. And so the effective index there is almost the same as the air or medium. Whereas down at the bottom, it's almost all germanium with just a little bit of air in between. So if I can get this profile just right on these pyramids or cones, whatever shape, then I can have effectively the perfect AR coating. Such a thing might be called a moth eye in current technology. And uh, Ulrika Schultz in Jena and her colleagues have done this very nicely uh, with a lot of materials and particularly plastics etching them to get a, a very high performance broadband AR coating. Now, another factor that comes into play is the angle of incidence. And here is an uncoated piece of crown glass, which at normal incidence reflects about four and a quarter percent. But as I go to increasing angles up to 90 degrees, the uh, reflection will drop for the p-polarization <coughs> down to uh, zero at the Brewster angle near uh, 55 or 57 degrees. And the S polarization just goes up monotonically toward 100%, whereas the P goes to the Brewster angle and then starts to increase again up to 100%. Here's a few cases. Uh, the blue curve is an uncoated piece of crown glass. The red curve is a V-coat of only two layers typically. And the green curve is a three layer, three material coating, which has a broad anti-reflection band over the visual spectrum here. Uh, there's also a four layer equivalent of that, two materials, four layers, which would be imperceptibly different in terms of reflection versus wavelength. Now that same curve for the broadband AR is this curve down at the bottom here at normal incidence or zero degrees incident. But if I tilted that at 60 degrees, I'd get these fairly ugly curves here for the P and the S polarization. This also uh, illustrates the well-known property that if you have a coating at some performance here like this one, and you tilt it at an angle, the wavelengths shift to shorter wavelengths. So you can imagine this curve here for the P polar or the S polarization will shift to be this one here. So I get this long wavelength shift in here. Now here's a case, if I've got the ideal coating, uh, I can actually at zero degrees, of course it will have zero reflection. But if I go up to 60, 70, or 80 degrees, the S and P polariz polarizations will split. And the 60 and 70 degree polarizations are all down here below one tenth of a percent from the ideal coating. And even at 80 degrees, the ideal coating will still only be on the order of 1% reflection. So that's what we could do if we could have the ideal materials. Well, atomic layer deposition is a technology that is becoming more and more mature. And uh, the process is basically to put a precursor down, which only one atomic layer thick will adhere to the surface that it's coating, but it's conformal, any exposed surface will be coated. And then any excess material is pumped away. And once it's cleared out, we put in the second material, the second gas, which in this case is actually water. And it reacts with what's already there to create aluminum oxide. So we have one atomic layer thick of aluminum oxide. And then we repeat that cycle however many times it's necessary to make the optical thickness that we want. And it's the ultimate precision and control because all I have to do is to be able to count the number of cycles 
to get the exact thickness I want to within one atom thick. Now this interesting paper in recent years by the group in Jena, uh, they've done something to help solve our problem of the need for a very low index. And uh, here's a couple of figures from that paper where they'll put down a couple of layers of SiO2 atomic layers and a couple of layers of aluminum oxide. And then they'll repeat that pair again and again till they've got a thick coating. And then they come back with, I believe it's phosphoric acid and etch away the aluminum oxide leaving only the skeleton of silicon dioxide. And if they, for example, put down a lot of layers of um, aluminum oxide and fewer atomic layers of the silicon dioxide and then etch away the aluminum, they can get a very low index skeleton, which is mostly voids. And the indices are indicated down here so that the lowest index they report is about 1.132, very close to index one. So that helps us in making our ideal. So we want this curve. We can use our herpin techniques to develop uh, something like that utilizing these atomic layer depositions. So here's the slide I showed you before where uh, this normal four layer AR does not do very well at these high angles of 60 degrees. But if I could do the ideal BBAR, it, it would actually go up to 80 degrees and still be below 2%, whereas the 1% design is at zero here. Or the, I'm sorry, the zero degree is at zero. Uh, here's a feasible, using that herpin technique, it's feasible to make a coating like this, where here now the full scale is up toward the reflection of the uncoated substrate. But for zero degrees, I'm down here way below half a percent. And even up to 60 degrees, uh, the P polarization is still only on the order of half a percent although the S is going up. So the average of the two is a little bit over 1% perhaps. So in conclusion, the technology now exists to closely approximate the ideal very broadband AR coating on any regular or freeform optical surface, which is otherwise protected from abrading forces. Thank you for your attention.